I'm interested in Luke 22. We'll start reading verse 35. The Bible says, And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and script and shoes, <clears throat> lacked ye anything? And they said, Nothing. Then said he unto them, But now he that hath the, a purse, we would call that a messenger bag today, don't think Jesus had sissy disciples, all right? You know, we don't have no modern translation here, all right? But he that hath the purse, let him take it, and likewise his scrip. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you that this, that is, this, for I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, It is enough. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, I've enjoyed all the good testimonies. Lord, I've enjoyed hearing how you have watched out and looked over and taken care of your people. Lord, we know that we are engraved in the palm of your hand. And Lord, we know that we're in you and you're in us. And Lord, we know we're your children. But it's always refreshing to hear how, Lord, you care about everything that befalls our lives. And Lord, we're thankful for those that, uh, prayers that have been answered. We're thankful for those folks you watched out after and kept them safe. We're thankful, Lord, for you meeting every need. And Father, we bless you. Now for the next few minutes, help us from the Word of God. Bless them. They're working with the children on the other side. I pray for those young children. They're young, impressionable minds. I pray the Word of God would be lodged in their hearts. And any haven't been saved, I pray they get saved at a young life. And Lord, you'd use them all their lives to glorify you. Now I pray for each and every one of us in the sanctuary, that God, you'd help us, you'd instill something in us that'll propel us this week to shine as lights in this dark world. Thank you for walking the dark hills, but thank you for being the glorious light in our lives. Now, Father, have your will and way. Use this unworthy vessel. We'll praise you for it, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen. Jesus is about ready to be betrayed. Jesus is about ready to go to Calvary. Jesus is about ready to pay our sin debt. And this is some of the final instruction that he gives his disciples before he's betrayed. Now notice, if you will, the question. In verse number 35, he said, And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and script and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. He's referring to Matthew chapter number 10 when he sent them out two by two uh, and he told them not to take a script, not to take a purse, not to take anything. Uh, he's teaching them to rely on the Lord, to trust the Lord. Uh, uh, and, he, and he used that wonderful uh, 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 statement where if you went in the city and they, they did not receive you, shake the dust from the shoes of your feet from that house uh, and go on to the next house. Uh, and he was teaching them something about... Uh, uh, bringing the good news of the gospel uh, to a lost and dying world. Uh, and he said, when I sent you out that way, without purse, without shoes, uh, without cloak, uh, without anything, did you lack anything? He asked the question. They said, no, nothing. And you and I, we may not have everything we always want, but we always got everything we need. The Lord always provides for us. Uh, so we see the question, but notice the quandary. Look with me in verse... 36. Then said he unto them, But now he that hath a purse, let him take it, likewise his script. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. Now this is kind of puzzling. He just reminds them how when he sent them out before without anything, they lacked nothing. But now he tells them, get your purse, get your money, your script, get uh, everything you've got. And by the way, if you don't have a sword, sell a garment, go get one. Now, we know from studying the Bible that the night he's betrayed, that Peter pulls out a sword and chops off a fellow by the name of Malchus's ear. And the Lord tells him, if you're going to live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. 
But here the Lord, just prior to that, tells him, go get a sword. Now, this is kind of a quandary. This is kind of puzzling. Well, some of you look puzzled right now. Hmm? What's he really saying to them? What he's saying to them, when I sent you out before, he said, I was physically here to take care of you. But I'm fixing to go away. And you're going to have to learn to take care of yourself. Mm -mm. Now, we know the Lord is always with us, but he's not physically here in the world with us. And even though he's taking care of us, there are some things he expects us to take care of ourselves. So we see the question. We see the quandary. But then notice, if you will, the quantifying. Look at verse 38. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, It is enough. The Lord knows what is enough for our lives. He knows exactly what we have a need of. And the Lord said, You know what? That's sufficient right there, fellas. That's all you need. It is enough. With God's help, I want to preach on that phrase right there. It is enough. Can I say, my dear friends, uh, I'm reminded of a day uh, 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 where they's on the mountainside uh, and uh, it was getting late in the day and the multitude was gathered to hear Jesus uh, uh, preach and teach uh, and uh, they were getting hungry uh, and the Lord tells his disciples, uh, give them to eat and say, we don't have anything to feed this crowd. Uh, and the Lord says, what do you have? They said, there is a lad here. Uh, he's got five loaves and two fishes. Uh, now, uh, in my study of the Bible, there was 5,000 men uh, that sat down. Uh, what they do not account for is the women and children. Uh, most believe that there could have been up to fifteen to 20,000 people there. Uh, and all they had was five loaves and two fishes. Uh, but can I say it was enough? Uh, uh, five loaves and two fishes uh, in the Master's hand. Uh, had a multitude. Uh, hey, I'm thinking about the widow uh, 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 that uh, 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 the man of God Elijah went by uh, and she just had enough meal to make a cake uh, for her and her son. They was going to eat it and die. Uh, and the man of God said, make me one first. Uh, just like a Baptist preacher, feed me, you take care of yourself later. Uh, uh, feed, hey, make me a cake first. Uh, she made the man of God a cake. Uh, hey, all I'm going to say is the Bible said uh, uh, she emptied out that meal barrel uh, but every time she went back uh, she had enough meal in the barrel uh, enough oil in the cruise uh, uh, what are you saying preacher uh, I'm saying when you're obedient to obey God uh, hey uh, you'll have enough meal uh, you'll have enough oil uh, it's enough in the master's hand uh, God knows how to take your nothing and make everything from it uh, it's enough uh, can I say I'm thinking about Moses uh, 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 leading the children of Israel uh, out of Egypt. Uh, they get down to the Red Sea. Uh, uh, Pharaoh's army comes barreling down on them. Uh, hey, uh, all those Jews were panicking, uh, ready to go back to Egypt, just like I've seen a lot of Christians. Uh, when the pressure gets on, the heat gets on, uh, they want to go back to their old life. Uh, uh, but Moses said... Uh, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord uh, and that rod uh, that God had placed in his hand uh, he lifted it up uh, and God rolled back the Red Sea I'm saying that rod it was enough uh, hey Moses didn't need a magic wand he had the rod of God uh, uh, friend uh, you and I we don't need something from the world we got the word of God uh, and it is enough uh, to overcome whatever we face or whatever opposition comes our way uh, I'm thinking about when they got down there tomorrow. Uh, they'd been three days without water. Uh, they're complaining. They're uh, uh, thirsty. Get down there and the water's bitter. Uh, and once again, they begin to blame the man of God. They begin to murmur and complain. Uh, God told Moses, uh, take a stick and throw it in the water. Uh, and he did. And that bitter water was made sweet. Uh, and they all had plenty to drink. Uh, hey, can I say that stick was enough? Uh, it's a picture of the cross. Uh, listen, your life was full of bitterness uh, you could not be satisfied uh, until you heard about what Jesus did on the cross uh, uh, the cross makes all the difference uh, and it turned your life from bitterness to sweet because it was enough uh, can I say I'm thinking about uh, when they got out there a little farther in the wilderness had nothing to drink now uh, keep in mind uh, they estimate there was about six million Jews uh, and uh, they got out there and God told Moses
Moses to smoke the rock, uh, or uh, speak to the rock. First time he smote it, uh, second time he told him to speak to it, he smote it again, and that's what got him in trouble. Uh, but hey, he smote the rock, uh, and out of that rock came a river of water to satisfy their thirst. It was enough. Uh, it was enough. What are you sitting here fretting for? It's enough. Can I say, Brother Brian, it does not shock me that what you needed, God dropped in your lap. Because that's just what he always does. It is enough, huh? I got to thinking, got to thinking about uh, 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 those three Hebrews thrown in the fire, uh, but that fourth man was enough. Are you listening? Uh, 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 I got to thinking about uh, 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 the Jordan River and uh, 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 the little maid uh, t- uh, the telling uh, Naaman, hey, if you could get to the man of God, he could help you, uh, and the servant of the man of God. The man of God didn't even come. Uh, he sent his servant. Uh, Naaman got all indignant. Uh, thought that uh, the, uh, the man of God ought to should have uh, uh, rolled out the red carpet for him. And finally, uh, he tells him, just go dip in the Jordan River. He said, the river's over here, much cleaner, much nicer. Uh, and his servant said to him, uh, hey, he's not asking a hard thing. Uh, he just asked you to go dip in this river. If he'd ask a hard thing, wouldn't you have done that? Uh, so he went down. Uh, not the first time, not the second time, but when he came up the seventh time, uh, just like the man of God told him. Uh, his, his flesh was uh, like a newborn babe. The leprosy was cleansed. Why? Because it was enough. Uh, Amen. Can I say uh, the bloodshed on Calvary is enough? Amen. Can I say the church house is enough? Amen. Can I say the word of God is enough? Uh, can I say the grace of God is enough? To, it's sufficient. Uh, can I say the love of God is enough? Uh, can I say that Jesus is enough? Uh, it is enough. Uh, you say, why is it enough, preacher? Well, first of all, I'm going to spit all over myself. Because you wasn't helping me. I was frothing at the mouth. But it is enough. Why is it enough, preacher? I say, first of all, it is enough because it subsumes every person. That means it includes every person. You see, the grace of God, the love of God, the blood of Jesus Christ, all the things of God wouldn't be enough if it didn't include everybody. We hit a little bit on whosoever this morning, and it includes everybody. That's why it is enough. Hmm? And we don't need something better because it includes, it subsumes everybody. What a blessing, huh? Doesn't matter where you've been, doesn't matter what you've done, doesn't matter uh, uh, how you was raised, what level of education. Aren't you glad the, the ground is level at the foot of the cross? Mm, we're all equal in the eyes of God. Mm. As a matter of fact, we're the ones that classify, not Him. He tasted death for every man. Even saved folks get to look around seeing who they think is as good as them or who, who's not as good as them. That's sad. The Bible says God's no respecter of persons. Uh, can, I, can I help you something? I was always raised that you don't judge a book by its cover. You ever hear that? Hmm. I've always learned this, or at least I think I've learned this, that the one that tends to, to, to be loud and brag and all that, uh, he's not all he says he is. Hmm. It's that quiet fella or that quiet lady. And they're the ones that's probably got the goods. Hmm? I just, I've just learned that in observing people. But you don't judge a book by its cover. You just never know. Hmm? We all come in all dressed up, and that doesn't mean we're living holy every day. Hmm? Matter of fact, the one that might live the holiest in here might have the worst clothes on. You just don't know. But instead of looking at them, why don't you look inwardly? So why don't I just worry about this guy? Because I'll be honest with you, the biggest person I've got a problem with in here is that one I look at the mirror in the mirror at every morning. huh? And that's the only one I can really control anyway. But let me give you this little story. This is a true story. Uh, absolutely most of you never, ever met my dad. My dad was a very proud man. Um, my dad was... Uh, part Native American. He was Cherokee Indian. Um, he looked like an Indian. You would have never dreamed he was my dad. He was only about 5'8", 
weighed about 125, 30 pounds, soaking wet. Uh, he was dark complected, had dark hair. He had the had the Indian nose, high cheekbones. Uh, you know, didn't have any facial hair, and that's why I can't grow beard and all that kind of stuff. My dad was a Cherokee Indian, but he grew up living off the land. Matter of fact, my dad traded his first car for a horse because he liked riding bareback better than he did driving a car. Uh, and they sold the old farmstead, moved up to Cincinnati for work and all that kind of stuff like many people did. But, uh, you know, my dad, he kind of looked like the Fonz. He wore a ducktail, had a greased back. My dad raced cars back in the late 50s and early 60s. He was a gearhead. My dad could drop transmission on his chest, you know, crawl out from under the car, roll it off, put another one on, go in and hold up with one hand, bolted it, bolted it. My dad, you know, he's one of those guys, he could weld, he could do electrician work, anything with his hands, he could do all that stuff. And he, and he was real self-sufficient, but my dad was a very proud man. My dad uh, didn't think too much of you if you bragged on yourself. That's just kind of guy he was. My dad believed in following the rules. But if you didn't follow the rules, he was not shy about pointing it out. I'll never forget one time we went down to sport, uh, Cook Sporting Goods on 4th Street. That's where we used to buy my ball gloves and a lot of stuff. They used to make the uniforms for the Reds before baseball got ruined. Uh, but we was down there, and my dad always had a big car. He always had a big uh, Lincoln, a big Mercury Marquis, a big car, Battleship. He always had a big car. And we was down there, and... and, and Somebody pulled up close in front, and a guy had went over the parking space line and on the rear bumper behind us, a little pickup truck. Well, we get in the car. I'm just giving you some insight to my dad. It'll make you understand me a little better. Again, we get in the car. He said, what truck? He dropped in rear end, uh, reverse, and hit the, hit the front of that truck and put, took it back about two parking spots, and out we went. Huh? That's just the way my dad was. Uh, that's just the way he was. Up until, I know in his 60s, maybe even into his 70s, my dad could go out and grab a flagpole and, and hoist himself out vertically, just like he was being blown in the wind. He was, a, he was, he was you know, it's just the way my dad was. But anyway, to make this point that I started on this rabbit with, my dad wanted a new Lincoln Mark 7. He'd been seeing the advertisements, he was looking forward to it coming out, and he wanted to buy this, this Lincoln Mark 7. He went to a Lincoln dealership, Brother James, and had cash money in his pocket to buy the thing. Now, see, my dad, again, he wasn't impressed with how you looked. He was more impressed in how you acted. And your yay should be yay, and nay, nay should be nay. If my dad gave you his word, you can take it to the bank. And he expected everybody to be that way. Well, my dad showed up at the Lincoln dealership. He had a pair of blue jeans on. And he had an old flannel shirt on. Didn't look like much. And they wouldn't even wait on him. He had cash money in his pocket to buy this very expensive car at the time. And uh, finally he walked up. He pulled the money out of his pocket and said, I was going to buy that car over there. Showed the guy the money. Well, then the guy wants to wait on him. He said, uh, no, nah, Baba, no. Nah. You had your chance. See, they should have known Brother James because he was wearing a pair of Johnson Murphy shoes that was very expensive. He, they should have looked down his shoes and known. You know, I, that's the first thing my dad taught me. Always shine your shoes. Your shoes will tell a whole lot on you because that's the first thing businessmen are going to look at. They're going to look down at your feet. If you don't take care of your shoes, they know you're not going to take care of anything. You know, he, he taught me at six years old how to uh, uh, spit shine shoes. And uh, he said, do that. He said, and always carry a pocket knife, boy. I've always got a pocket knife, all right? But, but can I say that he went on down the street and he walked into another dealership and this guy was just real friendly and come up and talked to him, treated him real nice. My dad ended up buying a brand new Pontiac Grand Prix, which was a nice car, but it paled in comparison to that Lincoln. But it was all about how you treated people. And can I say, we need to not look at how somebody's dressed. You don't know what they have on them. Are you listening? Somebody comes in and might look a mess. But you don't know. They might have just met the Lord and they're looking for a church. You don't know. 
what ditch that God got them out of. You don't know what God's doing in their life. You don't know. They might not be real concerned about uh, how they look. They might be more concerned about how they live. You don't know. Can I say, the grace of Jesus Christ is enough. Don't judge a book by its cover. You never know. I, I, I'll never forget when I was at Brother Pittman's. Y'all know Brother Mike Goodson. Y'all know he's a card. He's a cut up. All right? I mean, he's a cut up. If you've never went out with him outside of church, you need to do that. You will laugh till you hurt. Get him telling stories. Well, he's all the time got a joke, all the time cutting up. It's always been. His dad was the same way. Well, I'll never forget. He had told Brother Pittman, he said, you need to have this preacher in. Your church will really like him. Well, Brother Pittman, sight unseen, books this preacher to come in on Brother Mike's recommendation. Well, the preacher comes in. Well, I get to church that morning, and Brother Pittman meets me at the back door. He said, Brother Mike's pulled one over on us. He said, look at that guy. I looked at him. And you remember Droopy? That's what this guy looked like. He looked like Droopy. I'm not kidding you. He said, there's no way in the world this guy can preach. And it's Sunday morning. I booked him to preach Sunday morning. He said, look at him. He said, Brother Mike's pulled one over on us. Well, that's true. Well, Brother Pittman got up in the pulpit and said, well, we got this fellow, Brother Mike, uh, referred him to us. He said, he don't look like much, but come on, brother. <laughs> that's what he said. What well, a guy got up is Bobby Clark. Bobby Clark got up and he preached the paint off the walls. We missed that mark by a mile. Uh, uh, what I'm saying, you can't judge a book by its cover. The goodness of God's enough. It's enough because it subsumes every person, but it also satisfies every need. Uh, the Lord is not in the business of bringing you out from the Ur of the Chaldees and letting you die in the desert. He satisfies every need. Hmm? Now, unlike a couple years ago, we're sitting here looking at Thanksgiving dinner. I don't know if you priced turkeys. If you priced bacon. If you priced eggs. Where's Gracie? We need to get her some more chicken. She needs to start getting some more eggs out. Are you listening? Uh here a couple years ago, Gracie would bring eggs every Sunday. People were, you know, getting eggs from Miss Gracie. We need to get back in that business, huh? You seen the price of fuel? I actually saw it come down in some of the parts down south. It got down about three oh five a gallon down there, but diesel was still five twenty something a gallon. You do realize everything that comes to Kroger comes through a truck, and you do realize they put diesel fuel in the truck. That's adding to the price. I mean, everything seems like it's going up except your pocketbook. But are any of us starving? Right. Amen. Hmm? Has not the Lord satisfied the need? Amen. Huh? I'll be honest with you, I haven't curbed anything. I'm still eating as much chocolate as ever. Why? He satisfies every need. Amen. David said he'd never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging bread. And if you're honest tonight, uh, 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 the Lord has met every need. Uh, he's been good to all of us. Uh, and he always will be because we're his children. Huh? My children never come and ask for a thing that we wouldn't break our necks to make sure that they had it. And can I say the Lord just reaches into his bounty and gives us everything we need. And to be honest with you, he dumps a lot of what we want on us too. huh? Mm? Uh, he satisfies every need. It is enough. Uh, why would I go look for somebody other than Jesus? He's enough. Mm? Can I say? He succumbs every fear. It doesn't matter what you're facing. You're apt to be fearful from time to time. But you get to looking at the book, get to talking to the Lord, and all of a sudden, every fear is succumbed. Can I be honest with you? Twenty years ago, I was ready to do whatever. We'd probably already had the foundation out here on the new building we need 20 years ago. Because I didn't really care. Well, let's just go do it. But when you start getting older, you start thinking more. You start reasoning more. You start looking more. And I don't know, there's something about when you get about 60, I think something flips off in the side of our brain that lets us know 
most of our good years are behind us. Hmm. That's true. It's not for lack of want to. It's for lack, let's make sure. Hmm. We've got to get that building built. I know that. I've been praying about it a lot and seeking the Lord about it a lot, waiting for the Lord to say, okay, let's do it. But listen, there's something about the older you get, there's something about certain circumstances you're in, you're more apt to think about it, maybe even fear some things, than you did when you was young, younger. You know, I did a lot of stupid things when I was younger. That's why I can't hardly walk today. Huh? Like pitch ball to my daughter and she hits a line drives at me. How many more are you going to take, brother, before you realize, put a cage in front of her and pay somebody else to pitch to her? Huh? <laughs> huh? You know? See, what happens is, when you're his age, you fall, break an arm, big deal. You get a lot of attention. You get my age, you think, why in the world was I so stupid? Huh? I had that neck surgery last year. You all know that. You know, my hip still hurts from where they took that bone out. And when it gets cold like it is right now, it really hurts. I'm thinking, I had neck surgery. Why is my hip hurting? Well, what it causes you to think that next time the doctor says, well, let me cut on you. Well, let me think about that a little bit more. I've told Miss Annette, even though that there was a screw broke off in my neck, knowing what I know now, I probably wouldn't have had that surgery last year because my hip hurts. My hip never hurt before. Now it hurts. I don't like hurt. Well, I'm just trying to say, Him, the Lord, succumbs every fear. Those things that we worry about and are fearful over, in light of the Lord, we think, why am I worried about it? He's never failed me. Hmm? Can I say this? Why is it enough? Why is he enough? Because he soothes every wound. Can we be real honest tonight? How many have ever had somebody in church hurt them? Three of us. I said be honest. You've had somebody say something to you. You've had somebody disappoint you. Somebody hurt you. Yeah. Can I say, isn't it wonderful that the Lord's put us in this church with this crowd, with folks who love us like this crowd loves us? You know what it does? It soothes the wounds that we had from days gone by. We still got some scars, Brother Jim, but they don't hurt like they used to because God has shown us there is a balm of Gilead. There is a place where you can be transparent and real and folks not talk about you. Huh? Isn't that a blessing? It's enough because it soothes every wound. Listen, you can't be in battles without getting wounded. And can I say, when you get wounds from the enemy, that's one thing, but when you get Wounds from friendly, friendly fire, that's harder to get over. But I'm glad he soothes every wound. Huh? Listen, it's enough because he supports every burden. He said, take my yoke upon you for my burden's light. Do you understand when he said that, come unto me all ye that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Do you understand what he's implying? Most of us don't because we don't have yokes of oxen. But what they tell me is what they would do is they would take a well-seasoned, very strong ox and they'd pair up a younger, new ox with it. And the older ox ended up doing the load of both of them and just pulled the other one along. And can I say that when the Lord wants us to give him uh, to take his burden and give him our burden what he does he yokes up with us he carries us and our burden and my dear friends he supports every load you've never went through anything that the Lord didn't hold you and your load up even though you didn't realize it huh can I say this he secures every hope it's tough because he secures every hope the old hymn writer said, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. He secures our every hope. The blessed hope is He's coming back for us. He's secured that. He's already promised it. 
you can take it to the bank. And every hope you have in Christ, he secured it. What a blessing to know. Huh? What a blessing to know that heaven really is our home. Hmm? Uh, what a blessing to know is it's going to get better. What a blessing to know we win. Hmm? All that's secured in Christ. It is enough. The Lord was telling those fellows, this is what you need and if you don't need it. Sell off something you have to get it. And when they did that, he said, it's enough. And friends, there are sometimes things in our life that the Lord wants us to trade off for something better. And trust me, whenever you give up something for His glory, He always replaces it with something better. And when you do that, it'll be enough. So many folks still struggle with some things. You'd learn a great lesson if you'd learn to just give it to the Lord. Trust in Him, and you'll find He's enough. It is enough. All that God's done in our life, it is enough. Do you realize that if He'd have never blessed us after He saved us, it'd still been enough because what He did for us when He saved us is enough to take us all the way to glory? Hmm? You do realize that, don't you? Hmm? It's enough. It's enough. I wonder tonight, when are we going to realize He's enough? He's enough. He's enough. I got a little 45 of my mother singing her, her sister Sue cut it. And I think it was 1969. I know I'm old, I'm old, I'm old. But that's the name of the song. He's enough, he's enough, he's enough. And he's enough for you, he's enough for me. So why should we look for another when Jesus is enough? Hmm? Why don't we just get sold out for him and watch and see how big and how enough he really is. It's enough. It's enough. It's enough. Do you need a sword? He's got you one. Need some hope? He's got you one. Need some grace? He's got it. You know, whatever you need, he's got it. He's enough. And you and I just need to realize. Quit looking around and look up, and you'll find he's enough. Let's all stand, Brother Clint, come get a song. Or it's Brother Ray's turn. Brother Ray, come get a song. I don't know what day it is. Maybe tonight you just need to come and thank him for being enough. Maybe tonight you need to come and tell him you love him. I don't know. Maybe tonight he's put somebody on your heart. You need to go by and just tell him you're a blessing. I don't know. Or maybe he spoke to you about something specific you need to give him. Why don't you give it to him tonight? You'll find he's enough. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for your good grace. Thank you for always being more than enough than what we need in our lives. Lord, so many times we forget how good you've been, how big you've been, how much you've done. And Lord, we begin to doubt. We get begin to get fearful. Just remind us, Lord, how good you've been. Lord, just uh, tolerate us and be long-suffering with us. Lord, help us, Lord, to always convey to others. You're the best thing that's ever happened to us. Now, blessing this invitation, I don't know what folks need, but I know that you have the answers. So just do a work in folks' heart and in their lives. Father, we'll thank you and praise you for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.